Our need for ports was vital as our breath. All our plans turned upon Cherbourg. All our strategy waited upon its empty docks and piers. So the Americans sent all across Normandy to the coast, swung toward the north, impatient for the port. The German knew our lack and swiftly drew his forces into tight defensive groups so to contest the issue. Yanks advance on Cherbourg. From 30 to 50,000 Nazis were trapped by General Omar Bradley's 1st United States Army closing in on Cherbourg. Bitter street fighting marks the last stage of the push. Cherbourg streets are a shambles as our troops drive doggedly toward the harbor. With the defenses reduced to rubble, General von Schlieben, military commander of Cherbourg's fortresses, surrenders. With him is Admiral Henneke, who received Hitler's Iron Cross for destroying Cherbourg's port facilities. And this is the beginning of the end. Cherbourg's grim defenders surrender. As the Allied liberation of France rolls forward, thousands of Hitler's hordes fall into our hands. During the first 30 days of the Norman campaign, the Germans suffered 75,000 casualties. Our own men show the scars of battle, too. I've covered them with a gun down to the clearing stations. Thousands of them, and all kinds. The tough ones with a smile froze stiff on their faces by shell fire. And the plain Joes have had too much and ready to tell you that. And their poker-faced officers have never lost the poker-faced look. The SS, the parachute troops, the old soldiers off the Russian front, I've seen them all. The Hitler youth babies, looking like they walked out of Lincoln High. Expert killers. Kids that knew how a machine gun worked and nothing else. All through and talking too much. Ready to swear he hated Hitler all the time. Smart Alec with their talk of rights under the Geneva Convention and asking, when do we go to America? I never gave them more than the Geneva Convention. And that was all. Caux is a town through which the easy on ripples its slow way to the waiting sea, capital of Normandy. This was no Cherbourg advance, a knife thrust through the fields, but rather was the grinding of a drill, inch by inch forward. An der Front südlich Caen. SS Panzergrenadiere in Erwartung eines starken gegnerischen Angriffs. Bei den letzten Durchbruchsversuchen verloren die Angloamerikaner innerhalb einer knappen Woche über 500 Panzer. Operation Cobra. By the end of the month, United States forces stood at the base of the peninsula, at the gates of the province of Britain. The reaching of Abranche signified the culmination of the breakthrough and the point at which our forces split for the westward and eastward drives in the breakout. The trap the Allies closed at Argentan and Falaise, where they virtually destroyed two German field armies. For the weary American troops, it was a welcome respite, a time to relax. Here we see Edward G. Robinson, who's one, one of the many actors and actresses that came to Normandy to entertain our troops. They held a, a show right in this Normandy barn. after washing out of a helmet for many weeks, decided to use this beautiful lake for a bath. They were permitted to do so because they were fighting the enemy at an area called St. Malo. 
And incidentally, Germans held out at St. Malo for many months. On July 20th, a dramatic event electrified the world and revealed that there was no relaxation inside the enemy camp. Hitler himself announced that a cabal of high-ranking army officers had tried to assassinate him with a bomb in order to seize political power. After four years, the Allies have secured themselves on the soil of France. As the American War Secretary said, we are here to stay until France is liberated and Germany defeated. Into the Normandy countryside, the troops of freedom-loving nations march against the forces of tyranny. The faces of liberated Frenchmen tell their own stories. The Allied troops are received as long-awaited friends. Peasants show them the way, warn them where to expect mines and give all possible help. The Allies have found firm resistance and are prepared for even stronger contests. Cezambra Island in the harbor of Saint Malo, where resisting Nazis blocked Allied use of Saint Malo's port, first to Brittany's harbors isolated after the breakthrough from Normandy. Refusing to surrender, the Nazi garrison is once more attacked. This time from a hill near Dinar, where Americans used captured Nazi self-propelled 155mm howitzers. Capitulation came only after a siege of more than three weeks. Cameramen are in the front lines and constantly under fire. The 100,000 people of Rennes are free once again. The people of Brittany have a glorious and dramatic record of resistance to the Nazis. As these pictures were made, Rennes was the largest French city yet taken. To the Americans who captured Rennes, these scenes of enthusiasm are becoming almost a daily sight. As the Germans were meeting disaster in northwestern France, the United States 7th Army, combat-hardened veterans of the fighting in Italy, hit the beaches in southern France on the morning of August 15th. The convoy gets underway, heading toward beaches between Toulon and Caen. Landings begin at 0800 hours, supported by covering fire from battleships, cruisers, and destroyers. Three divisions, accompanied by French troops, made the original assault. beaches, reinforcements and equipment are ready to be landed. Landing heavy equipment as the original beachhead expands east and west. By D plus one, the invaders held a coastal strip 40 miles long, 20 miles deep. Films of the southern France invasion indicating the extensive preparations for the opening of the fourth front in the grand strategy to smash the Nazi European fortress. At Saint-Tropez, a tribute to the French forces of the interior for cooperation during the first days of the attack. Patriots are now reported to control 14 departments in southern France, totaling 50,000 square miles. They've not only been active in sabotaging the enemy's lines of communications, but have tied down substantial German forces. After four years of underground activity, the FFI meets an ally on liberated French soil. When the Allies landed, we fought in the open, but the 
price we paid for it was frightful. In the village of Oradour, alone, the Germans slaughtered 1,100 out of the 1,200 population, and the place was completely burned. Maki recruits are instructed in the use of firearms. These are patriots of the French underground movement, men who resisted Nazi domination for four years. French patriots, their job is to remove Nazi strong points, clearing the way for allied columns. The street fighting begins. underground fighters shadowed German snipers who remained behind. Sometimes the unseen snipers fire at their own countrymen to discourage surrender. French patriots round up collaborationists. Landings 15th August near Saint Tropez and Saint Maxime, advance elements pushed along the coast and inland against light opposition. The thrilling music of the Marseillaise takes on new meaning. Deliverance has come so suddenly to these people, they are slow to realize the nightmare of occupation is over. This is but a foretaste of things to come as the Allies move forward. The V for victory sign, once the symbol of a hope, is now a reality. The drive into the heart of France was deeper now. The first army flanking the third. The main body of the Nazi 19th Army has retreated up the narrow Rhone Valley and Allied forces press forward to block escape routes. Numerous French towns are liberated en route. These children, whose entire lives have known nothing but Nazi rule, meet a new kind of warrior. Yet the Normandy people had not felt German oppression at its worst. It was here that Germans rested their troops after their mauling in Russia. south as well as in the north. Staggering losses pile up for Hitler's divisions wherever the Allies manage to outmaneuver the retreating Nazis. Retreat for Nazi forces caught on the wrong side of the line was cut off. We rounded up our share of prisoners. The desperate plight of Hitler's armies became more apparent as the bewildered legions of a once mighty, destructive force found themselves defeated by an army they had been repeatedly told would never last on the soil of the Third Reich longer than nine hours. hopelessly depressed men. This is the March Upon Britain, version 1944. These men are evidence that the Allies are chewing deeper and deeper into the Atlantic Wall.
Mont Saint Michel was on a river that separated Normandy from Brittany. And here we met some of the other correspondents. This is Bob Capper of Time Magazine. This is Charles Collingwood and uh, Helen Kirkpatrick of the Chicago Daily News, and Joe Liebling of New Yorker Magazine, the ball-headed chap, and Werdenbecker on the extreme left, Ernest Hemingway. Hemingway was covering Collier's Magazine. Here he is seen talking with Bill Walton. And these are just moments that we could take a little time out to rest. The man in the center in this picture is Bill Stringer and he was killed trying to get into Paris. One of the things that correspondents tried to do was to get into Paris before anyone else.